He was the conservative politician with the magic touch. The only Tory to become mayor of London. I will be advocating vote leave uh, or whatever the, the team is called. The brilliant campaigner who helped win the Brexit referendum. Do you think that the British taxpayer should be supporting Spanish bullfighting? No! Absolutely not! Former Prime Minister David Cameron accused Johnson of lying during the Brexit campaign and only supporting the Leave movement to further his career. He thought that the Brexit vote would be lost, but he didn't want to give up the chance of being on the romantic, patriotic, nationalistic side of Brexit. Despite the Brexit result, Boris Johnson's ambition of becoming Prime Minister was frustrated by Tory MPs concerned about his character. Even key allies thought he was unfit for office, killing his bid to succeed David Cameron in 2016. Boris is an amazing and an impressive person, but I've realised in the last few days that Boris isn't capable of building that team and providing that unity. But in 2019, with Brexit deadlocked, the Tory party was in crisis and it turned to the man that many held grave doubts about. They might care about integrity and values, but they care even more about power. And they finally, if you like, held their noses and decided the only person that can resuscitate our electoral fortunes is Boris Johnson. The man they chose for the highest office in the land had twice been sacked from previous jobs for lying. Once from the Times newspaper for fabricating quotes, then from the Tory frontbench in 2004 for lying about an affair. But did that finish his career? No. Each time he lied, he went up the tree, not down it. Um, the rest of us might well, you know, suffer. He didn't. He actually benefited from lying. Sonia Purnell knows well the character of Boris Johnson. She worked closely with him in the Daily Telegraph's Brussels Bureau and became his biographer. And I think that therein lies the point. He thought, well, why should I stop lying? Because every time I lie, I get promoted in some way. And he lied about Brexit and, and he won that referendum and then he became prime minister. So that, that's where we are. He was rewarded for lying and he's lied and lied and lied ever since. In 2019, Boris Johnson won a thumping 80-seat majority, the biggest Tory win since 1987. This One Nation Conservative government has been given a powerful new mandate. And picking up traditional Labor seats along the way. But two years into his term, Boris Johnson's authority was eroded by Partygate, the scandal over a series of illegal lockdown parties in and around Downing Street, which once again raised questions about his honesty and character. I repeat, that was my mistake and I apologise for it unreservedly. Another scandal over what the Prime Minister knew about groping allegations made against his Deputy Chief Whip triggered over 50 resignations from his ministry and from party roles. I think what happened was Conservative MPs just looked and thought if he stays around then there will be, we will be on the airwaves defending the indefensible week in, week out and we sort of just can't take it anymore. I mean, they were all saying in their resignation, they said, oh, you know, I can't put up with this lowering of standards, all this lying, this lack of integrity. Hello, you knew that. Former Brexit Minister Steve Baker is one of those Tory MPs who helped make Boris Johnson Prime Minister. I always want to have an honest government that works with accountability, transparency, integrity and openness. Um, and that clearly is not where we were. And it's, I'm afraid it's right that Boris has now gone. But he has no regrets about backing Boris Johnson for the leadership at the time. The result was that we had a Conservative Party which came together, won a majority of 80, left the EU and destroyed the prospects of a really hard left Labour government coming to power in the UK. That is an historic success. It's a success I'm extremely proud of. Of course I regret how Boris Johnson's government's worked out. But my goodness, the alternative was far, far worse, however bad this may seem. When announcing he would resign, Boris Johnson seemed to blame his colleagues. But as we've seen 
uh, at Westminster, uh, the herd instinct is powerful. When the herd moves, it moves. There was no contrition in that speech. There was no, I got this wrong, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. It was literally everyone else's fault that he was now in a bit of trouble. But he's not gone yet. With a summer break and a Tory party leadership contest, he could still be in office until October. I dare say he's hoping and maybe expecting that something will come along and he'll be able to stay there. I mean, I think we need to be very, very careful about this. And a former Prime Minister, John Major, has written a letter saying we need to get him out of there quickly because he is quite deluded and he still seems to think he, he should have all the power. Well, we'll have to see what he does. But I, I think really Boris is surrounded with sufficient people and is in a position where he understands uh, it, it is now a position where he's just there for continuity. Thank you all very much. Thank you.